<coughs> Shalom everybody, it's me Amir, welcome back to Berlin. If you don't know me, usually I make YouTube videos about Berlin, but tomorrow I'm going to travel to Taiwan and hopefully also I will be able to go to Hong Kong. Also right now it's the time of the coronavirus outbreak in China. Also in West Europe there is a big storm right now and I'm afraid that my flight from Berlin to Paris will cancel or something will happen. It seems like the whole world is trying to tell me not to go. If you're watching it, I survived. I don't have any plans for this vacation right now. I have a few places I marked on Google Maps I want to visit. I know that the first thing that I'm going to do in Taipei is to get a new haircut though, because I really need a new haircut. I just landed and this is my hotel room in Taipei and as you can see from the window that's really nice I can see the mountain in the background it's called Yangminshan Okay, so I'm very excited. This is the first meal I'm having in Taipei and my good friend Marco took me to this place. I don't know how to describe it. It looks like hot pot, but it's made out of duck with a lot of ginger. They heat it up on charcoal and we have noodles here, scallops and tofu and vegetables. It's going to be delicious. Oh yes, baby, it's getting hot. Steer this duck hot pot with ginger over the charcoal. Here, baby, steer it right into my mouth. Okay, good morning. The second day in Taiwan and I just want to give first impression because yesterday it was only like half a day about the coronavirus. And my first impression, I don't think it's such a big deal right now here in Taiwan. I feel like only about 20-30% of people here are actually wearing masks on the street. In the airport it was terrible, like everybody was really panicking and there was big lines and announcements and everybody was wearing masks. Yes, yeah, so far so good. Seems like a nice vacation actually. The weather is fantastic. In Berlin it's about 3 degrees right now, but here it's like 27. I think this is exactly what I needed. On the next morning something really stupid happened. I tried to take this picture with my phone outside the window, but my phone slipped away from my hand and fell 12 stories over the roof of this garbage collection area. We wasted a whole day trying to look for it and finally buying myself a new phone. But to cheer me up, Marco took me to eat the best beef noodles I ever had in my life. And for dessert we had ice cream mochi at the main station. 
pai. Captain's log, it's the first day in Taipei. The jet lag is kicking in, I'm sleeping really bad. Doesn't help that I was drinking yesterday night also. <sighs> My flight to Hong Kong was cancelled. So this vacation is going to a weird place right now because of the coronavirus. There is a big panic uh, in Hong Kong, so a lot of flights are being cancelled. And as for making this video in Hong Kong, there are only 50 cases of coronavirus and only one death. In a country of 7.5 million people, I think the panic is unjustified. Well, now it's time to try to recover from the hangover and from the jet lag. the last day in Taipei actually and look I finally got my haircut oh my god yesterday I managed to buy a few things that I really wanted to buy like tea and spices also I will give you a link to my favorite tea shop in Taiwan if you also a tea lover and you plan to visit here I highly recommend this shop also in this tea shop they roast their own tea so it's also a little bit of a small factory so in my opinion if you're serious about your tea this is definitely the place to go yeah, I must give them a shout out because every time I'm visiting here in Taipei, I go there. I got a new arrangement with a flight to Hong Kong and I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to Hong Kong. I will not let the mass panic disrupt my plans. So the plan for today, I think, is to do a little bit of sightseeing. I've never been to Taipei 101, for example. So I think maybe today I will do something along those lines. Uh, usually I stay away from sightseeing, but yeah, maybe it's time also to do some touristy stuff. The next day I met again with Marco and we started our adventure along the east coast of Taiwan. Also a big storm arrived which made everything a little bit more interesting. We visited an old lighthouse and after that we stopped at Daxi Fish Harbor, which was one of the most amazing fish markets I've ever seen.
On our way to Ilan city, we stopped at Lanyang Museum, which was mostly interesting due to its architecture that remind me the type of rocks that you can see alongside the east coast of Taiwan. Rising powerfully from the ocean. For dinner we had seafood barbecue that was one of the culinary highlights for me. The fish and seafood were super fresh and full of natural flavor. When no additional seasoning or sauce required, you can be quite sure the stuff you eat was pulled out of the ocean just a few minutes ago. Absolutely amazing! On the next morning we visited the Cavaland distillery, which is my favorite whiskey brand outside of Scotland. This place was on my checklist for a long time ago, and I was very impressed to see the large-scale operation they have there, and also to see the distillers are the same as the one in Scotland. Yeah, I was very excited about it, I must say, but I think Marco maybe didn't really understood why. For lunch, Marco took me to a place I will never forget. It's basically a place where you cook eggs and vegetables directly inside the hot spring. And we were both quite surprised to see this place so busy on a Monday noon. Marco said it's probably due to the coronavirus, as children don't go to school right now and parents are spending more time with them. The food was absolutely amazing. The hot spring gave a unique aroma to everything. I found it really delicious, especially I like the fresh bamboo shoots and boiled peanuts. After that one-in-a-lifetime experience, we started our long way to the city of Hualien. We had a dinner at the city's night market, where we tried a strange-looking plant. And the local Aboriginal rice wine that remind me a lot of the Korean makgeolli. And for dessert we had grilled mochi. The city of Hualien has a unique atmosphere. The street was still decorated with beautiful red lanterns from the Lunar New Year celebration, and it feels like there is a calm spirit over the entire city. We had wonton soup for breakfast and visited a beautiful old Japanese shrine. We stopped to take pictures at a unique Starbucks made out of containers and also at a quirky place called Mr. Sam. On our way to the city of Taidong, we stopped at an ancient and mysterious stone pillars, somewhat like a Taiwanese stone hedge, and we checked out picturesque rice field as a brown boulevard. We arrived to Taidong by nightfall. We interrupt this program to let you know the garbage truck is heading your way. Go out right now with your trash bags and throw it directly into the truck. And had the local noodles for dinner. Quite delicious, I must say. And I also had a thousand year egg with tofu. Yummy! On the next day, we travel along the southern east coast of Taiwan. We saw the San Qianqi Arc Bridge. and we hiked to see the cave and lighthouse at the small island. Later we visited two other beautiful places that I will not try to pronounce as my Chinese is ridiculously bad. The rest of the evening was spent driving to the west coast of Taiwan, to the city of Kaohsiung. And the next day was my last day in Taiwan. I had a small break first and had a little walk in the city, and later Marco took me to see the coastline of the small monkey mountain.
but now it's time to say goodbye to this beautiful country and head over to Hong Kong. This is the room. Oh my god. Yeah, now you know I'm really getting old. And the view from the window. Come on, you must see this. Look, look. You can actually see the bay from here. What? You see? An adapter. Oh, I needed that so much. This is the best hotel ever. Shalom, long time no see. That was a very long journey from Taipei to Hong Kong. <sighs> Full of stress, I must say. I didn't expect it will affect me so much. The last day in Taiwan, I started to feel a little bit sick, like funny in my stomach. Maybe I was eating something a little bit fishy or maybe also it's psychosomatic because of all the pressure. And then I came to this hotel. You see it's very luxurious, it's a 5 stars hotel and I must say this is feeling very uncomfortable for me now. Uh, it's very luxurious, it's really nice, the bed is huge, a really nice view from my window and it was actually really cheap. When I'm coming back to Berlin I need to go to Amsterdam for a few days for a film festival and I booked a 3 stars hotel in Amsterdam and the hotel in Amsterdam was the same price as the 5 stars hotel here in Hong Kong. That's really crazy. The coronavirus outbreak really lowered the price dramatically. I will give you first impression. It feels like the city is a little bit empty. Also, people were very nice. Also in the airport, the taxi driver and here in the lobby, of course. But it feels abandoned. Like I wanted to take a bus, but there was a lady there saying no, 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 no buses. And I was the only one in the station. It felt like a ghost station. It was a huge station in the city center here. I was so afraid to come here, like the flight itself was very stressful. I had a lot of second thoughts about it and I didn't sleep good the previous night and now it's the middle of the night and I have a really nice bed and it's time to get some sleep. The next morning the weather was just perfect. Only three minutes walk from my hotel is the Avenue of Stars. It was very impressive and beautiful to see Victoria Bay and Hong Kong Island. I couldn't stop thinking also about how many tourists were here if the situation was a little bit different regarding the coronavirus and the political protests. After that I went to Hong Kong Island and I took the bus to the peak. The view over the center Hong Kong was very impressive. Also check the Sky Terrace, which is the type of tourist attraction that I usually keep a distance from, but today I had the entire place all for myself and the weather was perfect. So I don't think I will ever experience something like this again in my life, so I decided to pay some money and go there anyway. And the view was absolutely fantastic. I decided to go downhill via the peak tram, also a tourist attraction that I wouldn't take on a regular day. And as you can see, it was also not really packed. After that I went to have lunch at a place called Yatlok and I had the best roasted goose I ever had in my life. This was by far the best meal I ever had in this entire vacation. If you go to Hong Kong and you like this kind of food, you shouldn't miss this place, this is a must go. 
I'm thinking maybe on a regular day this place will be like super busy and you couldn't find a place and maybe you would need to book a table in advance but when I went there, yeah, it was kind of empty. I literally had tears in my eyes and I had to take another dish. The next morning I had a breakfast at a place called Australia Dairy Company and it's supposed to be the best breakfast in town and it's very very busy even at those difficult times. What I received was white bread and scrambled egg next to a muddy chicken broth with overcooked pasta and ham and a Hong Kong style tea with evaporated milk. The service was very fast and a little bit rude and honestly I didn't enjoy it so much and I don't think I will come back to this place. I really think I had better meals in hospitals. I moved on and decided to travel today, as this is the last day of my vacation. 
I really wanted to go to the little town of Tai O, but I was very surprised to see so many people had the same idea. I think most of the people here waiting for the bus are local, as I could only hear Cantonese. Tai-O was very unique and beautiful once I had a little bit of distance from the massive crowd and also took some nice pictures. After that I went to see the big Buddha at Gongping. It was also relatively busy, but the weather was really nice and I enjoyed this day so much. For the last dinner in Hong Kong, I met with my friend Tom and we had dim sum, of course. Tom also took me to West Kowloon Nursery Park, where we saw the beautiful skyland of Hong Kong at night. This view really reminded me of the movie Ghost in a Shell. We also played around and took some experimental pictures. The next day I had to catch the flight back to Europe early noon. The airport was very quiet and empty and I tried roasted goose that was not as good as Yatlok. I was a little bit regretting I didn't book a flight a little bit later because I really wanted to go back to Yatlok. Anyway, the flight back home was relaxed and comfortable mostly due to the fact that the plane was almost completely empty and I had the entire row all for myself. You can't really ask more for a 12 hours flight. <sighs> Yeah, so I'm back in Berlin and I finished editing this video and I have some mixed feelings about it. Well, on one hand, I think I had a very unique opportunity in this vacation to experience Taiwan and Hong Kong in a very special time. Hong Kong, for example, was very empty and very different than what it usually is. It's the first time for me in Hong Kong, so I can't really compare myself. But Kevin and Tom told me that if I were to come back to Hong Kong in a normal time, I will be maybe a little bit disappointed. I really enjoy this time in Hong Kong and on the second hand I feel like maybe I took advantage of the situation because as I showed in the video I booked a very very luxurious hotel for almost no money at all and I felt not so comfortable about it but Kevin told me I shouldn't feel like that it's only about supply and demand and I happen to visit in this time. I must say also that I booked the flight six months in advance so I didn't know of course the situation will be like that. Uh, also, I felt like there are a lot of businesses in Hong Kong that are shutting down right now and there were a few restaurants that we wanted to go to that we couldn't, so that's really sad. If you're thinking about maybe traveling to those places that I showed and it's still the time of this um, mass panic, it's not so scary once you're there, it's very scary before you're there, when I was taking the flight from Taiwan to Hong Kong, I was very afraid, but once I was in Hong Kong, it was business as usual most of the time. But yeah, on the other hand, you shouldn't take advice from random guy on the internet. 
Yeah, it's a bit complicated to, to talk about it because it was a very unique experience. It was a very unique vacation. And I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. I think I experienced something that I would never experience again in my life. And I'm very grateful about it. I want to thank my friends, Marco, Kevin, and Tom. I hope you enjoyed the video. I did it really gorilla style. I didn't use my camera so much. I used my phone most of the time. I didn't have a plan to go and have a travel vlog. I just did it in like, okay, let's try to do it. I hope this also will help you to plan your trip. Check out the links below for more information. Now I'm back in Berlin and I hope the weather is going to be better soon. I'm looking forward for the spring and summer. Hopefully I will do some cool videos for you about Berlin again. See you next time.